Well, good morning, everybody. It's Saturday, May the 15th, uh, 2010, and welcome to Ham Radio in the Park in Mesquite, Texas. Uh, this morning, we're going to be setting up a full-way 40-meter delta loop, and going to show you how easy it is, and we'll get it hooked up and make some contacts to show you how well it works. So uh, bear with us. We're going to step go through the process now. Okay, our uh, major component is the antenna. Uh, this is a, uh, a piece of uh, number 14 stranded insulated wire. Bought it over at Home Depot. Uh, it's 137 feet 6 inches long. It's a little bit shorter than the calculated uh, uh, length for this uh, full wave loop. Now, on one end, the wire is uh, soldered into the center conductor. On the other end, it's actually soldered to the shield. There's nothing on the center pin. And then we've got a T connector here in the middle. The coax will connect here. The antenna, two ends of the antenna will connect here. Now the other items that we have, we've got uh, some of the uh, military surplus four foot fiberglass poles. And uh, discovered by Wonder Ran at Home Depot that this, uh, these fiberglass poles fit quite nicely down on a piece of inch and a quarter EMT conduit. Now it just sits there, so what we're going to do when we set the antenna up is we're going to drive this conduit about 19 or so inches into the ground, leaving a part on top to set this down on, we'll build the poles up on top of that. But uh, the next step here is we're going to take this, the wire, and lay it out as a delta on the ground. Alright, so we're going to set a tent stake to hold this one in place. And we've already got this one marked with some tape to mark the corners. Now this could be set up as a, a uh, delta loop or a square. Today we're going for the delta. That's the red tape. That's if we were going for a square. We want the yellow tape. Alright, there's our yellow tape. Stretch that out, set that in the corner. We'll grab another stake and we'll lay the third one. Okay, this is going to stretch just a little bit, so we're going to bring the pole out about a, a foot or so from the corner before we drive it in. one of our fiberglass poles to uh, judge the depth. Looks like we can drive it another six inches or so. I like the pole to sit on top of the of the pin. I don't like for the sit on the ground. That way you can rotate things if you like. So we'll drive it a little bit further. And there's our base. Now, this is a regular flat washer. It's a rather large one and we've uh, drilled these, drilled this out to be a guy ring. You can buy these on uh, on eBay, all nice and drilled and painted. But I think we paid a buck and a quarter at the uh, local hardware store and used a drill press to drill it out. It's your choice. Okay, let's go set the other two pins. Okay, uh, the the reason we set the uh, the pin back about a foot or so from the uh, from the corner is to give us a little bit of room to take up the slack. When this thing gets up in the air, the weight of the antenna is going to pull these fiberglass poles in. And with the guy ring and the rope behind us, uh, we will uh, we'll straighten them up and, and make the antenna a little bit more tall. Okay. We've got all three of our pins driven. We've got our fiberglass poles in place. Now, uh, this is standard 550 parachute cord and what we're going to do with this is we're going to uh, attach the antenna 
Now what I normally do is I just use two of the, of the holes that are right across from each other. Pull it up and over and pull yourself some slack. Bring up the antenna and you're going to do a figure eight. So you just tie a regular, an old granny knot. Bring it around the antenna and then chase it back through the way it came. You know, bugs are kind of bad out here this morning. All right, so nice little uh, figure eight right there. Now we'll take out the slack and then to secure it, just use like a half hitch or something like that, put it up over the pole, and that'll keep it from going anywhere. So that's our basic attachment right there. The feed point will be slightly different, but uh, it will uh, be essentially the same. Once again, second corner, just a simple little figure eight to keep the tension. Take up the slack here, or half hitch, whichever way you want to, what's most convenient for you. And there we go. And now we'll go do the. Uh, That's about a foot. It's about a foot, right about where it was. <clears throat> Once we get it up in the air, what will happen is we'll, we'll pull back on this and it'll get the antenna good and taut. Okay, on the feed point here, I'm just going to go ahead and make a figure eight. Then uh, we'll just wrap that around. Just put either leg of that in there and just pull it tight. Gives us a little bit of mechanical support as well. And then just put the antenna back on. There your feed point hangs. And take up our slack. Make our little hitch here. And there you have it. <clears throat> now it's hanging pretty low to the ground right now. And uh, the next step is going to be to raise each corner uh, one pole at a time. We go over here and grab the end of the coax and we'll go ahead and get that attached. Now ideally you'd get this thing up about <clears throat> 30 feet in the air since it's a 40 meter loop. But we're just doing this as a portable thing today. So we're going to go up with five poles, which gives us uh, roughly about 18 feet off of the ground. So we're going to go uh, drop off our poles and get those set up. Although you can put this antenna up with just one person, this is probably the part where it would be nice to have some help. We'll take the first section up. Slide this over and set it back down on here. Now we're going to leave this one in place and build everything else above this. So we'll go to the, we'll just work around. Now for those that would like to try NVIS, this is a perfect, just about a perfect place to stop, baby. Because the antenna is going to end up being kind of low today anyway, we'll probably have some NVIS qualities, but if you just wanted a few feet off the ground to burn the clouds above, this is a pretty good way to do it. Alright, now since we're at the third corner, we'll go ahead and insert one more. Set it on up.